Okay, ready? Anago Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. Well, with Crown Royal being our new partner, hey, along with our old partners, um, they, uh, they've they got this little thing about playing hockey the Toronto way. Mm. And playing hockey the Toronto way with our town, our crown, we're going to give a crown to a player each episode who plays hockey the Toronto way. And Toronto hockey used to be, you know, put on your working boots and your hard hat yeah. and go to work and grind it out in the corners. And the Leafs ground out almost, what was it? Uh, 10 of 11 of 10 years or 10 of 11 years not in the playoffs. They sure ground that to a pulp. Something like that. It was really bad. I refuse to acknowledge 2013. So we want to talk about who wore the crown the Toronto way and the new Toronto way. The way that we play hockey in Toronto now, the hockey we like, is the finesse, is the skill, is the creativity. It's the new brand of what the NHL is. And quite mm-hmm. frankly, as we know, the Leafs are sort of leading the edge on that. So every single episode from now on, and here's, here's what we want. We want to use the hashtag Our Town, Our Crown. If you were at the event on Saturday, we saw tons of people using it. And uh, I honestly, I don't even know if we prompted you enough to do it, but you did it anyway. So thank you. <laughs> um, I want to know after each and every Leafs game, use the hashtag Our Town, Our Crown. Tag me, Jesse and Steve, and let us know who you thought played hockey the most Toronto way. And I'm going to start today. Okay, good. I'm going to start. Because I have my answer. Because my answer is absolutely 100% Mitch Marner. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty tough to go against. That how do you day. how do you not love the game Mitch Marner had last night? Well, and like when you talk about skill and finesse, it's like uh, you know people think it's with the absence of toughness or the absence of grit. Mm-hmm. That wasn't Marner's game at all, was it? Nope. Flying all around, man. You know how hard you got to work to draw a penalty shot shorthanded? <laughs> like, that was crazy. And you know what's interesting about that? Um, I thought that was among the dirtier plays I've ever seen. And the reason really? I thought that, yeah. Now, so I, I hmm, okay, and the I reason I, and that, that's okay. passion, Mac, right? <laughs> I thought, I thought, because I was too busy paying attention to the puck being in the net, but you saw something else. No, not with, not with his first goal, with the penalty shot. And okay. not the pedal, the, the, obviously the pre. So, so Pasternak goes and pushes his leg out from under him, right? Oh, was it Pasta? Was I, yeah, pretty sure. No, sure. it was DeBrusque. DeBrusque. Yeah, DeBrusque. So DeBrusque goes a and rough game. Pushes, and pushes his leg out from under him. And what that does is not only does that put Marner off balance, you know you're getting a penalty, right? You know you're like, or penalty or penalty shot, you know that's going to happen. So yeah. he does that. But he does that without Marner being able to see or know he's around. Because Mitch Marner slowed down, which mm-hmm. he shouldn't have done. On the original breakaway. Probably not. That's what I would say. If you're on a breakaway, someone's always going to try to catch you. If you've got the puck, you're probably the slower skater, right? Right, but maybe he assumes I'll draw something either way. Sure. Yeah. I'll draw something either way. The better thing to do is to hook around his legs. I'm not even kidding. If you're going to take a penalty, the better thing to do to me is hook around his legs and pull towards you. And the reason you do that is because, A, he can fall forward and he can catch himself. If he's being pushed from behind... He can't catch himself, which is dangerous. Hmm. Secondly, now this is split second stuff, but right, right. all the same. Yeah. Um, he Mitch Marner went sliding into Tuka Rask right after that. Could if have you taken out his if goal you goal. pull his if you pull his legs towards you instead of pushing them towards Tuka Rask, chances are Tuka Rask doesn't hit, take half the hit that he took from Mitch Marner. And also, I mean, let's be honest, Jake DeBrus was sitting so fast, and this is so split second that he was. He was on his ass and in the boards so quickly that he almost well, he he took a he took a like ten minutes off the game, did he not? Brusque? Yeah, oh, so he like disappeared from the bench afterwards. The um the Bruins practice roster today did not feature Dick DeBus, uh, DeBrusque. <sighs> he hit it hard. That now, would be a huge loss. I don't want to say I don't think he's a dirty player. So that's the difference. That's a, I thought it was a dirty play. I think it's an uns- maybe it's an unsafe play. To me, if you're going to do that, which you should do, he did the right thing. Because I'll take my chances with a penalty shot any day. Pull the guy towards you. Don't push him. Now, someone might argue pulling uh, their legs from under them causes them to go head first into the boards. Right, but at least he meant to be on his knees then. Right. And he's got his arms up. He can do. maybe. The other aspect is if Mitch goes ass up, like he's going Mm. skates up. And that, you know, God knows what happens to Tuka Rast. Right. Anyway, resulted in a penalty shot. That's just my thought. Who's Jesse. your who's your crown wearing player? Uh, I was gonna go with Mitch Marner. So you say Mitch choice. Marner as well. Yeah, yeah. Is there anybody that might be close <laughs> as a runner up? Oh, I got one. Go ahead. I got two. <laughs> I'll, I'll give one for Jesse. Sure. Okay. Trevor Moore and Connor Brown. <laughs> I think that's 
isn't that the old way? No. It's the new old way. The okay. new old fashioned All right. way. Okay. Uh, because, yeah, grit grinders, like five foot ten, 182 pound Trevor Moore, and God knows how big Connor Brown is. Right. Connor Brown, underrated thick. But uh, both those guys uh, laid devastating hits in that game. Uh, Connor Brown laying out Marcus Johansson. A lot of us didn't see until this morning. How did we miss Trevor Moore taking out Zdeno Chara into the boards? Uh, yeah, that one was, uh, that was like I saw that as a gif later. That looked extremely painful. Yep. Um, but also, they're speed demons. Yes. Like, forget the grit. They were speed demons. What what caused the Bruins, and Zdeno Chara in particular, fits, uh, especially with those guys on the ice, he couldn't catch him. Couldn't catch him. And it finally caused them to take a penalty. I think it was in the second period. Kapanen trying to get around him. You're allowed to step in someone's way. You're not allowed to hold them against the boards. And that was Chara's only option because he cannot catch these guys. You guys know Crown Royal loves the Leafs, and we are excited to be partnering with Crown Royal. So next game, why not enjoy Puck Drop with a Crown Royal? Who wore the crown? It's sponsored by Crown Royal with the Steve Dangle Podcast. Question. Yes. If the game was called by the book, Mm -hmm. would Zdeno Chara be sitting in the press box? (sighs) <laughs> Interesting. I don't know about press box, but he'd be sitting in the penalty box a lot more. A lot of cross checks in that game. It, it was now, and again, I understand both, both it's ways, playoffs. Dude. Yeah, it's they never ways. will. Yeah. Sure, it's both ways, but let's not pretend it was equal. And uh, and every time, no, the interference call that he got was like the fourth time they were gonna let him off, and finally, they were like, okay, Zidane, we got to put you away. Like, well, what do we get? What do you? You're not leaving us with an opportunity here. It's so blatantly obvious. Yeah, it was. It was funny. Uh, I think it was Jim Houston said during the game, like, "Oh, there's a there's a veteran getting a, a veteran call from a ref. Uh, oh, so a non call. Yes, a that's non-call. what that means. He's old, so you let him get away with it. Like, that's ridiculous. Like Don Lecision, uh, I think it was, made a chart, and it was uh, penalties taken mm-hmm. versus t- penalties drawn. There's a center line up the chart that is basically even. So you have even uh, penalty drawn to taken. Almost every team in the league, except for like the Ducks, the Ducks were like the only noticeable team that deviated from the line. Everyone was basically along the line. Interesting. So the Leafs didn't draw many, didn't take many. The Avalanche drew a ton, took a ton. Refs are too obsessed with keeping the game even. And they're not calling the game by the rule book. And his argument was call the goddamn rule book. Now, I'm not trying to say that was all about last game. I don't want to lose Bruins fans one game into the series. No, no. But uh, call the damn rule book. And it's so funny that you play an 82-game regular season and the rules don't apply anymore. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I still say, man, the playoffs... (laughs) I... I said this months ago, but I said it jokingly, but it might be true. The playoffs could be an advantage for the Leafs. They've been playing penaltyless hockey all season. Yes. They- not for, not against, nothing. They, they led the league in five-on-five five goals. Mm-hmm. In this game, if you don't count the empty netter, the five-on-five five goals were 3 nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, They and, had a great game, dude. And going back to the... The you know the fact that we we we, we took it, Mitch Marner for our town our crown, um, it's it seems to be or at least it seemed last night that there was a team that showed up and expected it to be one way, and then there was a team that showed up and said no, it's going to be another way, and there was heart there was fire and heart and soul, but with skill, yes. And when it it was interesting before the game, like you know hearing that you know David Backus was going to get was going to get uh, scratched because he was a factor in last series. Yeah. And, the, the, you know, last year he was a huge, I don't know, he was playing second line minutes. Big enough factor. Scored two goals um, that I remember. I'm curious as to what your both of your thoughts are on two things. Number one, was that the best Leafs game we've seen this year? And number two, was it the best Leafs game because the Leafs played well or because Boston didn't? Uh, I don't think it was the Leafs' best game of the year. They played other really good games. It was just a very sound game. It was the... That game was why I scream about this team when they look like crap. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
<laughs> because I know they're capable of so much more. The Remember the conversation we had after the Leafs finally beat the Islanders? I was just like, oh, there they are. Right. Where have they been? <laughs> and they showed up. They finally showed up. Like, can you believe that that team lost 6-2 to the Sens? No. And it's, <laughs> it's funny because you, you look at, like, even the passing. Like, I'd love to know what their pass completion percentage was. Because, like, all the precision. passes were making it. It was like, wow, all right, finally. Skating, hitting. Yeah. It, it was, like, hitting. I, I know this is kind of dumb, but, like, you know, people talk about toughness and grit and everything. I look at a hockey player and I see height and weight mm-hmm. and ability. Connor Brown, you know, not uh, your typical goon, I guess. You know, you don't really expect him to throw his body around. All he has to do is decide to do it. And he can. And he did. Trevor Moore did. He understands his role. Jesse's been very quiet. Yes. I'm curious to get Jesse's thoughts. What is the question? The question is, first off, was that the best Leafs game you've seen this season? And second... Was that Leafs game great because the Leafs were great or because Boston wasn't? Um, first of all, I think we're I think we take too much credit in what happened in the regular season. I think you can just completely throw it out. So it doesn't even matter if it's the best game of their season. It's the best game right now, and that's mm-hmm. all that matters. Right. Elliot right? Like, Friedman made such a good point. He's yeah. like, you can just completely rewrite the story on yourself the second the playoffs begin. Yeah, it's Will like, um, boom, one game, one goal. Even the Tom, like Tom Wilson's contract. It doesn't matter. He got them a cut. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, well, Who cares? And, Pay him what he wants. And we kept saying, he has fewer regular season goals than Connor Brown. Yeah. Not anymore. Who cares? Well, doesn't not matter. anymore, but who... Literally, who cares about the regular season? Yeah, if, you, if you're the Kings and you finish an 8 seed in the regular season, then you win the Stanley Cup. Who cares how your regular season went? So yep. I think I think now, we, as Leafs fans, we should throw out the regular season, look at the team now, and they played fantastic. And there's nothing to complain about. Mm-hmm. If you leave last night and you have complaints about how they played, then you're nitpicking way too hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't love the Hainsey riley pairing. I don't love... The Muzzin Zaitsev pair. I don't mind. Fine. I don't yeah. mind. And that. it worked. They last night. It sure and it worked. And last it worked. Night. But okay, you're you're replacing a third line that for the past month and a half or so has been some combination of Marinchin, Hall, and Ojeganov, yeah. and you're making it it's Gardner and Dermot. It's there's no comparison. And there isn't one. If you were to look at the numbers, and again, one game is a small sample size. They got <laughs> the smallest. Yeah, the smallest sample size. Yep. Dermot and Gardner got were the worst pairing of the three. Mm-hmm. Last oh, night. were they? They I, were. I haven't seen. I think this. their Corsi was in the twenties. Where they got outshot. Like it wasn't good. Yeah. Now I it, understand why Babs is doing that. That makes a lot of sense to me. Gardner just took like. 20 games off, man. He only played 16 and a half minutes. And Dermot only got 12. Yep. But I don't think, based on what their numbers saw, or like what we saw, I don't think that they needed any more. That's interesting. I think you had I didn't other notice pairs. them as that bad. Mike Babcock, I think, and we talked about this Wednesday, and this was, and this was, I, 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 I posed this question, and, and I didn't know the answer to it, and, and I remember looking at Jesse's eyes and the belief that Austin Matthews would play 18 more minutes, more than 18 minutes. Oh, and he yeah. actually did. He played yeah. 20 minutes. Tavares didn't play 18 <laughs> I know, I know. Which is crazy. Yeah. But when you, when you, I was like, is he going to coach this team the way it was set up to be played? Which it really hasn't been. The point was the three-line the three line wave, right? right? And you throw the fourth line in there when everybody's exhausted. Right. And that never really happened this year because Nylander didn't sign. And there was this and there's injuries and whatever. It just never really took off this no. year. Um, um, I think we finally saw it. And what was interesting was when Tavares and Matthews were off, even though Matthews got a lot of the tough uh, tough matchups, and, and um, when you looked at, I think Matthews was a, like he was with, against the Bergeron line a lot, mm-hmm. even though they mm-hmm. tried to match Tavares with the Bergeron line. You're on line. the road. You're not going to be able to do it. Bingo. Um, and, and Matthews, by all accounts, looked good, but you still want to see more. I bet if that goal goes in, people aren't saying that. Um, however... Good game, and it looked. I thought Mike Babcock was the was the Mike Babcock I thought he was. Does that make sense? I'm like, yes, yeah. this is. And he coached the team, and he ran the lines on a road game. I think I, that was among the best games he's ever had as a coach. And I and I have a theory uh, about. Sorry, with the Leafs, that is. Yeah. He won cups with Detroit. He won gold medals. <laughs> oh, I get that. Yeah, I get that. That, yeah. that little thing. Um, no, I have a theory about because people were freaking out before the game that he split up Matthews and Nylander. I think once we go back home, he puts them back together. 
And what do you think the third, like, what does Kadri's line look like then? Uh, you just switch Nylander and Kapanen, probably. Okay. Um, or maybe not. He might not, but... They sure looked good together. They did. It, so there's a, there's a couple keys here. He's giving Tavares, Marner, Hyman the top line. But because they're on the road, he can't manage that all the time. Mm -hmm. So why not put Matthews with Janssen and Kapanen, who can be out of position but catch up to the play? Yep. Because he's ridiculously fast. Nylander's not slow, but Kapanen's just on another planet. And can I just say I have never hated Nylander with Kadri. I, I they have uh, great chemistry, dude. They seem to. I was, I mean, I was trying to figure out the last time I'd really seen them together, and I don't know when it was. Uh, like I don't know when. When did they at play least together? Three weeks, maybe a month. So it's it's kind of like, and that was when they were in a bit of a funk, and it was weird. Yeah. But there's no question that the two of them know where each other is, and mm -hmm. when you put Nas with a with an elite winger or close to elite winger, whatever you want to classify Nylander as, skilled. He's got extreme skill. Okay. Yeah, he's got crazy skill. What heads you, up play by both. What do you take from? Uh, Babcock immediately after the first goal, uh, the, on the power play, he throws out <laughs> Nylander, Janssen, and Matthews. Oh, did he? Yeah, that's the line that came out after the first Interesting. goal. Oh, so that was after the Bergeron goal. Yeah. So he likes to throw out a sort of juiced up line um, okay. after the penalty kill. And, I mean, they just got scored on. So that was his version of the juiced up line. Like, what he's done a few times this year, I think... We've seen Tavares Matthews Nylander. We've seen Tavares Matthews Marner. Uh -huh. Like we've seen them, we've seen him just completely loaded up. But because he's on the road and you know he's got defensive assignments, I don't think he wanted to do that. Can we? If that's not the better line, could he not? Why isn't that just the line? It's d better offensively, right? It's different. Yeah. Like it's not in his mind. It's not better overall. Uh -huh. So what was that line's purpose? The the first two lines were tasked with shutting down the three-headed monster up front, but they're good enough to be an offensive threat as well. And mm -hmm. the Leafs' first goal of the game was against that top line, and it was the Tavares whatever, whatever line. So they're able to contribute offensively, but their primary focus on the road was shutting down the three-headed monster. Dude, Marchand and Bergeron look great on the power play goal. Mm -hmm. Name something Pasternak did. I can't. He was invisible, and that guy was the boogeyman last oh, year. Oh, last year, ter him every and time he him touched and the puck, it was it was in. It was oh. in. It seemed like Brandon Carlo was all over the ice. Though. Yes. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just all night you hear Carlo. Yep. Which Who is, is interesting. Seventy five. Um, uh, started with a C. Coil. No, Charlie it wasn't Coyle. Coyle. It was the defenseman. I'd never heard of him before. I was like, I hate this guy. Uh, Connor, <laughs> yeah. Connor Clifton? That's the guy. Connor yeah, Clifton, Connor Double C, yeah. my boy. Yeah. I, I don't know. He was he was throwing his body around. Um, the Bruins, okay, not to pat myself on the back, <laughs> but did the Bruins not look like they were doing an impression of the Bruins? They did. Now, that, but that's that's what I wonder. Okay, so you got the next game and you're at home. Yeah. And you dressed your and, and Bruce Cassidy said it to the Boston media, who are just as intense as any other media market. They oh, are very yeah. intense. Oh yeah. And he said, We're dressing our speed. Back as sits. If you're Bruce Cassidy and you won last year getting Toronto to play your game, mm -hmm. yeah. are you not dressing back as next game? He basically <laughs> ran his flag up the pole and said it loud and clear. We're gonna be assholes next game. <laughs> Is that what he said? No, no. That's not what he said, but by throwing Bacchus back into the lineup, you know, Marsh... Well, I don't know if Bacchus is playing. Is he going in? He's in the practice lineup. Okay. The brusque is out. Mm. Um, by throwing Bacchus back into the lineup, assuming that's the way it goes, um, by uh, Marshan saying, we thought it was going to be easier than it was, which was a bizarre quote. The Bruins are... Like, like what I said in the video today was um yeah I didn't I didn't say it quite like this so I'll expand but it's like a game of rock paper scissors mm -hmm. the leafs are scissors and the bruins are rock and no this is a terrible analogy I was going to say the leafs tried to outrock the bruins <laughs> 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 but wait rock beat scissors yeah. also anyway the leafs <laughs> tried to be the bruins last night the bruins tried to be the leafs and I think what they discovered is they're not as good at being the Leafs as the Leafs. So are. what happens when the unstoppable rock mm. hits the uncatchable paper? 
It's such do you know a what I'm shitty, saying? It's such a shitty analogy. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, so if the rock. Obviously. Yes, yeah. obviously, yeah. 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 So, but here's the thing. If the Bruins play the Bruins game and the Leafs don't bite, what happens then? It's a toss-up. I think it's a toss-up. Dude, the... You know what? Time is so undefeated. Um, and because the Leafs did look a year more confident, I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't want to put too much into that because it is one game. It's one. It's game. not just one thing, though. I, I think it's a perfectly valid point you're making. Like they do look more confident. Mm-hmm. They do look faster. They do look uh, more well put together. Um, it's amazing what you can do with a, a roster that's not, you know, three quarters turned over every freaking year, <laughs> like when they were bad. Um, I think the one of the main points you made last episode was that. Thomas Placanic is now John Tavares. Like, <laughs> like that's not that's, that's not a real upgrade. <laughs> it's an unreal upgrade. It's <laughs> it's I don't know, you guys. We paid more for Placanitz than we did to get Tavares. Yeah. Oh, and we and, gave him a second round pick for Placanitz. Nothing for Tavares. Mm, he was free. Yes, I think that's sure a big was. deal. And the series won't be close if the games look like this. No. Like, there wasn't a moment where it looked threatening that the Bruins were going to win the game. Mm, yeah. There was a couple, ch- period they had a couple I didn't chances, like very much. but you're right. Yeah. Last yeah. year, it was like, the Leafs can't get out of their own zone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and there were a few times they got hemmed in. Second period. <laughs> Bruins got 21 shots in the second period. Leafs yeah. got 14, which was mm-hmm. nice, but... <laughs> but that, it was also 2-1 throughout the second. Yeah. And then, um... Yeah, I don't know. And then how, like, how many breakaways do they have at the end of the first within, like, three minutes? Is Tavares oh, had one? Leafs? No, yeah. that was the second. That was the second. Okay, sorry, the it, second. They yeah. had like three breakaways in the f- in uh, at, at least three breakaways. No, I think it was four breakaways in the second period. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, Tavares, thank goodness, didn't make it four one. <laughs> thank <laughs> ah, John, you got some reading, I see. Uh, and then, but Matthews almost screwed it up also yeah. at the end of the second. <laughs> and like that's blown defensive assignments, is it not? It has to be. If well, the other team just escaping the zone that quickly and throwing the puck down the ice. The Leafs are... I think it's underrated. Like, we didn't talk enough about the fact that the the Leafs were, up until the Vancouver game, very late in the season, undefeated when leading in the third. And it wasn't because <laughs> they're so sound defensively. It was they had this wicked transition game and wicked defense. If you start pinching for the goal, for the tying goal, even a little, they're going to burn you. Their their defense is offense. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's they've flipped the game on its head. And last night they did a wonderful, wonderful job at being the Leafs. Did they did they go perfect in the third? When leading in the third, what was the, the No, the they run? lost no. one game in overtime to the Canucks. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's and, ah! So yeah. so it, one of the things that Gus Kitsaros talks about a lot is transition. Right, and it's it's the least exciting part of the ice. It's the the area between the two blue lines. Like, who cares? Um, <laughs> but that games are won and lost there. And one of the things that the strengths that the Leafs were supposed to have that they really didn't quite. You saw flashes of it, mm-hmm. but you didn't fully believe it. That what you saw last night was what they can do to you transitionally, what they can rob you of in the center of the ice, mm-hmm. like middle of the rink. And they won those transition battles. When you win the first game, it's great. But my my concern, I'm gonna I'm gonna relate this to to school, which I was bad at. But my concern with classes was, <laughs> when I got an A to start a class, I always felt like you know, like that first test of the year, you can you can always sort of ace it. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh. I always felt like, damn, like it's only like it it always felt like not that it was down from here, but I don't know where I can improve on. I don't ever like to start. Sometimes I don't like to start with an A because I'm like, where can I go from here? I ah, like to move my work I've my way I've never had up. this problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing. The ace has never kept coming. So yeah, yeah. maybe I should have been just stopped focusing on that. But my, I guess with the Leafs here, is it is it wrong of me to, I'm excited, I'm mm. encouraged, but I'm not convinced. And I would like to see it again in Boston. And it doesn't yeah, of mean... of course. Like, if it's a game where... You remember that first Tampa Leafs game of the year where Vasilevsky just shut the door? Or either mm-hmm. of the Rangers mm-hmm. game where Gor- Georgiev started. If it's a game where it's close, mm. I want them to win, obviously. Mm-hmm. But if it's a game where it's close and say it's 2-1 and there's, you know, and they play extremely well, then I'm going to believe it. But I... I the one thing that I, you, you can't really argue with this team is consistency's been an issue. A hundred percent. But I think you're also looking at the Leafs in a vacuum. So now I think each series has had one game, right? Yeah. I think so. Out of all the eight series, Mm -hmm. 
I think there's only one team that's like, ha, we got out of it totally unscathed. We're great. We're fine. We did. We couldn't have played more perfectly than we did. Calgary Flames, who, by the way, started Mike Smith, who got a shutout. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> we'll, unbelievable. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, unbelievable. Hilarious. Um, Washington, 3 nothing lead on Carolina. Oh, they're going to kill him. Oh, they're going to kill Carolina made a game of it. Mm-hmm. They made it 3-2. I don't know what the final score was. Uh, 4-2. 4-2. Carolina made a game of it. And I don't think Capitals fans are like, that went perfectly. Um, Tampa. Yeah, <laughs> looked Tampa. like they were going to curb stomp the Blue Jackets. It looked like it wasn't going to be a series. Well, the first, it was like the first 10 minutes. Three we were nothing, like, yeah, yeah. that's it. It's over. And they won. Do you know how much self-satisfaction I had after watching that first 10 minutes? And then I wake up the next morning and it's 4-3. I'm like, shit! Columbus <laughs> Jack! And Columbus Blue Jackets fans are just coming out and drums like, we, oh, we believe the whole time. Ah, you loser. I think it's going to... Because I said sweep, guaranteed. Yeah. Not oh, not wow. a sweep now. Nope. I, I actually have to say this. The first night, every single series I picked, I was wrong on the first night. <laughs> I was brutal! The first... I had one. I think I got one. Dallas even beat Nashville. Oh, yeah. I should have stuck with Dallas. <laughs> Damn it! It was so bad, uh, so bad. It was it uh, is hilarious, right? Like, what are you gonna do? Did you see uh, Bobrovsky save on Kucherov when it was three uh, nothing? I need to see it again. No, uh, he slid across the ice, did a little pass. It was a, it was um, two on zero. Uh, pass to Kucherov right across the ice. Bobrovsky saves it, keeps it three nothing. It saves. They the go damn down game. the uh, the other end of the ice. They score. They tie up the game. Oh, oh my the rest god. Of so did that, you see it, Hedman get walked on that one goal? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. We got it. We're gonna go through the <laughs> oh, series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Like, like, but, so we're looking at the Leafs in a vacuum here. Uh, I think we're going. Well, it was four one, but also like it was three one because you know one of them was an empty netter, but like also one of them was a penalty shot. So like take that away. Like no, they won. They won four to one. Yeah. With every series so far, you can go. You know. This well, there game. was this. Well, there was that. Well, there was this. Mm-hmm. But there is that in every game. They played one game. They won mm-hmm. that one game. I want to see it again, too. I'm curious to know. I have... It's. It has nothing to do with the Leafs. Um, I have faith that the Boston Bruins will be better mm-hmm. in game two. Well, and that so. was going to be my last question about this game. Because I know that there is a ton of other listeners of other... Of other teams that want to, they want to hear what we would have to say about you know the the rest of the bracket. So we'll get to that stuff. But mm-hmm. I do want to ask if you're a Boston Bruins fan and if you're a Boston Bruins manager, coach, whatever, what are you looking for and what are you trying to do next game? More give a shit, a lot more give a shit. Like everyone was sort of uh, poo pooing what Marshan said. You know, we thought it was going to be easier than it was. Saw a few people say it looked like an excuse. I sort of got that impression. The Atmosphere in TD Garden was off, like in general. It wasn't as loud as I remember. They booed them off the ice at the end of the second. I don't second. think that was Fans a boo. I think that was early. because Tuca made a great save. Oh. It was Tuca. Yeah, because the broadcast broadcast kept saying they booed them off no, the ice. No, because it, 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 remember stupid. Tuca asked me that killer save on Matthews? Yes, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. So yes, that's, did. it wasn't boos. And I actually, uh, David Alter tweeted that too. I'm like, isn't it Tuca? And he's oh. like, oh, yeah, probably. Oh. Okay, I, good show. And I just good don't think show. our My boy bad. Jimmy Houston's been down there yeah, enough to... Yeah. He uh, hasn't watched the Vancouver Canucks lose to the Boston Bruins in the finals was, nearly he enough. He was pretty funny. He was. He was great. Night. The Charles... How is that not a hold? Oh, it is. <laughs> and it is funny. You know what's funny? He's poor Jimmy Houston, man. The guy's from Vancouver, yeah. right? Oh, were people calling him a Leafs homer? They were calling him a Bruins homer. He's oh. from Vancouver. <laughs> He loves the Canucks. Why do you think he would like the Bruins? Anyway, Jim Houston, I think, is one of the best play callers in the game. God bless you, Jim. You killed it last night. You were great. Uh, you were was, great. That was really funny. How is that not a hold? Like oh, it is. He, and you know, there's always whenever you see him on camera, he's this. He's such a like. There's always a smile. It's like mm. how, you could tell. You could hear him smiling. How is that not a hold? You know what I mean? He smiled that in in, in the reality. Anyway. So you want to see more give a shit? You do? You, well, uh, no, I don't. Well, you oh, don't. If, but Bruins if you're a Bruins fan, Bruins fans, if I were you, I'm ripping directly from the LFR. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of like players I noticed, like often. I noticed Jake DeBrusque. Mm-hmm. Did you when, notice Patrice Bergeron's he was haircut on the ice? I did notice his it's a little aggressive. haircut. It is very aggressive, and I noticed him. Obviously, still handsome. The first line wasn't bad, but it was definitely neutralized. And like Pasternak, dude. Out is he, of, out is of he the hurt? three-headed monster, I don't know. Okay. 
I, I didn't. He wasn't the monster he was last year. Frigging monstrous. And, like, this, this was something I saw a few people bring up. Like, Tavares and Matthews, uh, those two lines, they don't even have to do that spectacular of a job to do a better job than last year. Not just because... Uh, Matthews had two points. Well, yeah, not just because they did a poor job, but because, like, what are the odds Pasternak's going to have, like, another... What what was it, like, 20... Th- didn't that line combine they had 20 for, like, points 25 the, points? 20 points in the first two games. That's that absurd! It's absurd, and you never know. You never know. Let's not tempt fate. Let's that not one. tempt fate, but... Um, you could do a marginally better job than last year and still come out with a, a better result. One thing I wanted to ask you guys about, because yesterday, after Nylander takes that penalty, oh no! I go to Twitter, ah! and you know when there's a leaf thing that happens, like, oh, somebody's called up or called down, you see all of the writers, and they all have the exact same <laughs> thing. <laughs> yesterday, when Nylander takes that penalty and high sticks uh, Clifton there, the thing that every writer said no. was, you can't be doing that, reactionary, you can't be swinging that, it's playoffs. What did you guys think about that? I didn't. I, <laughs> uh, I didn't. What think, a dumb penalty. Saw I, that 82 times. I, I, I didn't think it was <laughs> retaliatory, but God. it had to be him. Didn't Thank it? God he scored a breakaway goal. Oh, oh shit, yeah. yeah. yeah like, oh, I thought, shit, I thought yeah. he was good. I thought he had a good game. I mean, as good as a... F- you know, fourteen and a half minute player can muster. Exactly. I didn't. I didn't think it was like he wasn't. He wasn't the star of the game, but he had a good. He had some good moments. Great goal. And what obviously that goal? goal was phenomenal. It was a phenomenal goal. But what the hell was Rast doing? Like I'd rare. I this rarely is, criticize this is the why goal Boston on a fans dry, get, get they 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 he makes them crazy. Well, <laughs> and and well, it, and it was such a funny war. Bruins Twitter. I've never seen this before. Full meltdown. Really? They were in full meltdown this morning, and I was like, well, which team do you cheer for again? Like I was, I was baffled. But Rask was the reason that game was close, and also gave up a bad one. Who's the guy who's who's? There was a breakaway. Sort of funny uh, in Bruins where he works for NBC. Is Joe Haggerty or something like that? Or jo- uh, Joe Haggerty? Is yeah, it Joe? Haggerty? What was he saying? Do you follow him? I do follow him. I uh, like who was in full meltdown mode? Because I thought Pete Blackburn had. And and Pete Blackburn is is the type that will tap dance on your grave when when the Bruins win. Oh yeah. But he's also extremely hard on them. And and so you know he had a pretty measured take this morning, which was yeah. he thought the Bruins kicked their own ass more than the Leafs kicked their ass. But his measured take was in response to all the hot takes, right? right? So, so who was hot was taking? Trying, what were they saying? Like everyone in his mention, oh Rask was garbage. I saw um, uh, what was one of them? Marshan did a Casper impression, oh. like, like a ghost, and I'm like. Uh, he was pretty good, man. Um, uh, yeah, like, I, that line was neutralized a bit, but I didn't think Marshan was bad, and he was up to some of his pesky tactics. You know, not maybe not the usual ones. The one the one unreasonable thing I saw was the um, the alleged Kadri slew foot on DeBrusque. Oh, it, I don't think that was, was, that was not a slew foot. It was not a slew um, foot. The, uh, to answer your question, Jesse, mm-hmm. there are two things I want to happen. I want... In, in 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 my hockey fandom, this is this is all I want. I want the Leafs to beat the Bruins so everybody will shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I want William Nylander to just score goals. He's he's had, he's had. I no. Let me rephrase that. I want his shooting percentage to regress to its average. I want it to go back to the mean, which is about eight percent, eight or nine percent. He was shooting four no. percent this year, right? Oh, good so two, two level headed. So two level headed. I, I want him to score twenty goals. And here's what I want: it's not because I don't <laughs> oh, want William Nylander to get a, rack up a pile of assists, which he did this year, by the way. Yeah, he, he racked up a ton of assists. I think his assists were up compared to his career average. His goal scoring was down. If he shot just above his career average, he'd had like eighteen goals this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he he had like six. If you even doubled it, which is still below his career average, he'd had twelve. He didn't and have he a put, training camp. Exactly. So so which is his fault. Sure. Well, fine. well, it's, it's we'll say fifty fifty. Sure. Fine. But, <laughs> but for the for argument's sake, I want. The Leafs to win, so everybody will shut the fuck up. And I want William Nylander to score at a normal pace, a normal William Nylander pace, so people will shut the fuck up about William Nylander. I'm a, done. I'm done about both of these things. Yeah. It was a great point by Elliot Friedman, man. It's the playoffs. You have the opportunity mm-hmm. to completely rewrite your story. Frederick Anderson, have you heard like a single peep of dissent? You know, fantastic game one. 
Muzzin, Zaitsev even. Yes, Adam? Mm, sorry, continue, continue. Are you reading something on the Twitter? Yeah, yeah, something just broke, but keep going, keep okay. going. Um, well, and I guess it could work the other way. Right. Because now all of a sudden the Bruins are this, you know, fragile paper mache figure. Well, I don't think they are, though. I no, mean, I, I don't it, think they I'm, are. I'm talking, like, hyperbole. Well, according to Bruins Twitter, if you if you follow Bruins Twitter, for sure. Full meltdown, and then they win the next one at TD Garden. Everyone goes, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, Bob McKenzie, I'm just going to, this is quickly an aside about the Buffalo coaching situa- situation, which we sort of addressed on the last show. Well, yeah, they got uh, jobbed out of Todd McClellan. <laughs> right. So Bob McKenzie just tweeted this now. I had to check the date on it because I was like, what? why is he tweeting this now? But at 227, so about half an hour ago, April 12th, which is today, Todd McClellan is no longer... A consideration to be the head coach in Buffalo. Sabres identified McClellan as a <laughs> candidate. And there was some dialogue this week over an offer slash deal, but it was never formalized or finalized. The expectation is McClellan may be the head coach of L.A. McClellan was certainly a candidate in Buffalo, but one of the number of candidates, Buffalo, uh, but just one of a number. Sabres are continuing the search progress. So I guess that's Bob just confirming the reports that were already out there, but I thought I would. Well, that's uh, weird. And Pierre Lebrun is now confirming that McClellan is going to L.A. next week for his official interview. So, oh, for his inf- I thought it was done. I thought it was done too, but it is not done. Oh, weird. So that's the interesting part. Sorry, I I'm, I didn't mean to throw us, but thought that was worth bringing up. That's weird. So we had to take a bit of a pause uh, right there. I, if you're <laughs> listening to this, you're like, uh, I didn't notice that. You didn't need to bring it up. But the camera will jump, and that's because somebody had an interview scheduled in here, and we didn't have the studio booked because we're irresponsible. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm, also stupid. <laughs> <laughs> mm. no, I don't, wh- Mainly that part. <laughs> Also stupid. Mm. Oh, I, don't, I don't remember what we were talking about. Well, I know we talked about the Leafs at length. What we are going to talk about is Rich Wallace. Oh. Oh. That's right. And how you can discount yourself. You can actually, I got, we got a, a couple people who, um, we got a hilarious tweet from somebody today. Uh, Heather Smart. At Heather Smart underscore. Not stupid. And she got 58 out of, 48 out of 50 or something on uh, on a sales test. I saw this. And then she's like, yeah. she's like, and now I'm going to buy a Ridge wallet to celebrate because Adam Wilde won't shut up about him. <laughs> there you go. And I said, well, you're going to need that. It was a sales course. Where are you going to put all your commissions checks? Right you inside see? a Ridge wallet because there is a money clip you can do that. And this is the part where I bang it to show you how hard it is. Bang it. Well, oh yeah! He banged it against his knuckle. I don't know why. So, you... <laughs> because why, we made a granite. Why does Steve bang it against his knuckle? Ugh. So she decided to do her presentation on you and the Ridge Wallet sponsor. Yes, that yeah. also is true. Okay. Sorry, I forgot that yeah, part. That's yeah. also true. <laughs> uh, yes, which yeah, yeah. is insane. <laughs> <laughs> so she got uh, forty-eight out of fifty on a sales presentation on how we present Ridge Wallets. Hell yeah! Wait. So you got 48 out of 50. Yeah. She got 48 no, out of 50. I think Adam about, did it. Listen. I think if it, Adam got a 99. Guys. <laughs> you should get the credit. For I dropped out of two did. schools. There's no way that's possible. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah there's no you way. You don't know what your grades were when you dropped out. You could have been like an A-plus student. Do you want to know my actual GPA? <laughs> Do you want to know my actual GPA? Uh, Yeah, because I didn't know mine. 69.5. I am not kidding you. That's what it nice was. Nice and a half. Yeah. It's technically a 70. But yeah. No. Yeah, it's my, nice and, high. and then it was funny because I remember my parents being like, "This is well, in high school." Yeah, high school. Okay, my parents oh. were like, "I was about to say my my university <laughs> GPA is out of four, so it doesn't make sense." Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but my parents were like, "Uh, well, that's not great." And I said, "Dad, well, what's yours?" He's like, "Well, 65." I'm like, "Well, then, <laughs> yeah, get out of here, Kenneth." Yeah. That's that's improvement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's, ge- that's generational improvement. Yeah. Hopefully, my daughter, when she comes around, will be seventy five percent. There you go. Whoa, hey, Whoa. hey, hey. Three the, quarters of the pie. That's a little ambitious. <laughs> the trend has not been ten percent improvement. <laughs> You're five percent. Oh, I'm sixty nine. Jeans better bring it. Because it ain't coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> Her jeans better bring it. They got to do the heavy lifting here. Anyway, yes. Ridge wallets. Cut your commission checks and put them in your Ridge wallet because you'll be they'll be safe. But in all honesty, they are bulletproof. They're amazing, and I mean I, I mean like bulletproof in a not an actual bulletproof sense. I'm, I was I, like, wow, that's bold. I'm not actually convinced that they're fully bulletproof. How about but they're very hard. They're hard. This and is the uh, this is the Red Bull part of the commercial. Where you have to be like, it doesn't actually give, give you, you wings. wings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you drop actually it, actually bulletproof. <laughs> but if you're watching on video, I'm dropping it. Why? Why? No, you're just <laughs> well because. Would there be a, you know, like if I did that to my phone, I'd be like, oh, but with this, like I've dropped it on concrete because I drop stuff all the time. There's not a scratch on it. And I've had it for six months. 
And he's been throwing Actually, it at the floor every day. Has it been six months or has it been a year? I don't know. I think it's more than six months. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, honestly, these things are fantastic. And the thing is, is that it's the key here is you can buy a wallet, you can buy a leather wallet, you can you could do all those things and you can replace it every couple of years. This is the key with this is this is supposed to be the last wallet you ever buy. This is the this is you don't need to buy one again. It's lifetime guaranteed. It even came with a screwdriver in case you need to replace mm-hmm. pieces on it. And by the way, lifetime warranty on this. So it's yes, it's a hundred dollars and we will hook you up with a nice little discount code. Just use SDP for 10 percent off. The key here, you invest once, you never have to do it again. After the apocalypse, the only things left will be cockroaches, <laughs> and Ridge, Yarmir <laughs> Yager, and Ridge Wallace. Man, Zidane Char has got to make it through too, you think, right? Not after game one. Ooh. Hey, all right, now let's go to the West. We're going to start with the West and get through all the playoff series here. So we got Nashville, Dallas, and like I said, every prediction I made for the personally for the first uh, games, I was wrong on every single one of them. Dallas wins. What were your thoughts and takeaways from the games? You know who is unbeatable when he's on form? Ben Bishop. Well, I was going to say Pecorino. You know who wasn't on form? <sighs> Pecorino. When the puck goes through him, it goes through him. Right. And if it comes down to goaltending, they're boned. Nashville is a better team than Dallas, in my opinion, mm-hmm. yeah. on paper. Uh, they loaded up at the deadline. They were the better team heading into the deadline. They uh, added more at the deadline, arguably. I mean, Matt Zuccarello is a hell of an ad. Um, you know, I don't remember Wayne Simmons or... Brian Boyle leading their team in scoring. Maybe Simmons did. <laughs> definitely not Brian Boyle. <laughs> no, definitely not Brian Boyle. But Wayne Simmons is, has been a guy that's gotten close to, if not, he's hit 70 points at least once. Yeah, but Zuccarello, I guess, just because the Rangers have been so meh for a while, it, uh, his brilliance got lost. Like, that's not a role player, really. Like, that is a key contributor. Mm-hmm. That is a first-line winger on a lot of teams. Um Wayne Dude. Simmons' career high is 60 points. He's done it twice. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Not too bad. Um, Let's dude, see. you... Uh, the Preds should be winning that series. It should be tight. The Preds should be winning that series. The fact... Man, a lot of home teams lost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so scary if you're a Preds fan, man. That's so... Every series... Or, sorry, every first round has a goalie... Who says no? He doesn't care who the favorite is. He just says no. Is Ben Bishop going to be that guy? And I think if you're Nashville, you should be especially disappointed because you got three on them, mm. and you still couldn't pull off the win. Not well, and good that's enough. that's where it starts. You, it's either at that point, it's either goaltending or it's your or lack of play, like breakdown of play. Yeah. Miro Hiskinen, Hi- Hiskinen, Hiskinen. Friggin I still yep. haven't figured that out. He, he looked good. Like, every series has to have a breakout guy, at least, especially if you're the underdog. It can't just be goaltending. This this could be a real, real breakout party for the kid. Now, um, Nashville could easily get back into this, and this could be a 4-1 series. One no game. problem. It's one, one game. game. Yeah. It's one game. And that's what I was trying to stress with the Leafs, too, is that, yes, very encouraging. One game, though. Well, encouraging for Bruins fans, uh, getting back to that. You know, you look at losing game one. Uh, Bruins fans know better than anyone that Game 1 doesn't necessarily matter all that much. Second round series against the Lightning, Game 1, Bruins won 6-2. to two. I remember that. People were like, whoa, what's with the Bruins? Four straight. Right. What was the record for the Leafs like last time they won a Game 1? I think it was 2003. 2003. Against it was great Philly, night. and they lost that series. I believe, oh, yes. Oh, really? That was, wasn't that Jer- Jeremy Roenick with the heartbreaker in overtime? That was 2004. Oh, okay. No, they lost two to the freaking... I hate the Flyers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Flyers were like the low key devils. Like they, they stopped oh. two playoff runs that should have gone deep for, you, man, for the Leafs with the Belfort. The Devils, the Flyers, and the Sabres. Those yep. were my nightmares. Am Killers. I taking too too much stock into game one wins though, then? Because well, I th- I think the Leafs winning game one really matters, especially because it's on the road. But if I think it matters a lot for the Leafs, I can't not think it doesn't matter a lot for these other teams. Right? right? Well, like what what is the percentage? I don't know if you could look this Isn't up. Isn't it but in the thirties that I the team t- wins the first? I can tell you. The team who wins game one yeah. wins X. Number I think it's of- like thirty something percent, and then if you win two, that percentage goes up to over fifty. No, it's got to be more than thirty percent. It couldn't be only thirty percent. 
I thought it was. I don't know. No, a lot oh, of games. If you lose, you mean no. If you sorry, if you if you, if win, you win game it's one, be over fifty. Here, I would think. Did you know? Teams that take a 1-0 lead in a best of seven series own an all-time series record of 467 and 214, which huh. is 68.5% wow. of teams win after going up one nothing. What about two nothing? Do we know that? So we'll find that out after game two. Because sports because stats, stats will throw no, that out. No, that is NHL PR. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. They always give the stats after the game. So technically... The mathematical odds right now are a second round series between the Leafs and Blue Jackets. That's that's the that's now that's insane to think about. Yeah, but it, we are very very yeah. early in like, the process. Like like a St. Louis Dallas second round. That's what we're looking at, or a uh, Calgary San Jose, or uh, New York Islanders Capitals, which would be a hell yeah. of a series. Yeah, uh, give me all that right into the veins. Um, okay, so we got the Jets and Blues. St. Louis took a uh, one nothing lead on this, and the Jets. Didn't look like the Jets we know that they can be, but they've looked like the Jets a bit of of late. Now, I have to say, they did play better. Mm -hmm. They were a part of it. It wasn't like they were out of the game at all. But the St. Louis Blues continue to surprise. And I don't know why, but I haven't been able to wrap my head around believing them in in them yet. And and maybe maybe I need to. The Blues barely squeaked out um, a 2-1 win, I think it was. But it should have been so much further apart because when I was watching, I didn't get to watch the whole game. But in like a 10-minute span, the Blues had three power plays, something like that. I think it was in one period. Uh, So it should have been a lot worse. And then I think it was 15 seconds left, the heartbreaker save from Jordan Biddington. Dude. Mm -hmm. If you're a Jets fan, you got to be tearing out your hair. Yep. Jets should have at least made it to the Stanley Cup final last year. You had it stolen from you. From Marc Andre Fleury. I know they lost in five. They had it stolen in five. Uh, that's that's just how it worked. If that happens again this year against a team who I think is genuinely better, uh, especially than Vegas was last year, what do you do? Like so many, we've talked about it before. No team makes more mistakes, with the exception of the Edmonton Oilers, than a powerhouse team that lost early in the playoffs. If you're the Jets, you got to stay the course. But I can see them making some drastic mistakes mm-hmm. this summer if they don't win. Their lone goal scorer, Patrick Line. Because, of course. Of course. Had to be. Had to be. Uh, and I actually got messages from Jets fans who were like, ah, he scored. Uh, take that, everybody. Uh, Calgary, Colorado. Sort of went as you'd expect. Not quite. Um, I didn't expect Mike Smith to throw up a shutout. Okay. I expected Colorado to put up more of a fight. Maybe they did put up more of a fight, but it was sort of lost in perception because mm-hmm. Mike Smith got a freaking <laughs> shutout. Well, and I <sighs> call me a non-believer still, but you can you can't blame really? me for not believing. Now, yeah, non-believer like Mike in Smith. Mike Smith. Oh, now the Flames as a whole. He's got <laughs> the top playoff save percentage of all time. Did you know that? Yes. Of goalies who've played over twenty games. You know who else is on that list? Jonas Hiller. Why, he was amazing in the playoffs. He was. Yeah, so why are you discrediting uh, I'm Mike not Smith? discrediting. <laughs> I don't believe it. All right. Let's throw that in the garbage right now. Because you know what I didn't realize? <laughs> and and what I think I might have said last episode, I might have stopped myself too. Well, Mike Smith has a track record of being good in the playoffs. His last appearance was 2012. It doesn't count. I think This everybody... podcast didn't exist. I think people still look at 2012 as though it happened three years ago. No, no, it's seven like, years ago. It's like when seven. people are like, whoa, 20, or 2000 was 19 years ago. Like, a, you know what I mean? <laughs> born the day the Coyotes got eliminated in 2007. Have you seen that? It's approaching their seventh birthday. Have you seen the tweet? This is completely off topic, but kind of related. Have you seen the tweet from the pr- professor who tweeted out an email from one of his students who referred to the, uh, like, 1998, they're talking about an essay, and they referred to it as the late 1900s? What? Oh. 1998 is technically the late 1900s. Oh and this God. kid who was born in like 2003, they, they're they they're like, yeah, the late 1900s. That's 1998. And, right. that is, that, and I was like, line. we're so old. <laughs> Anyways. Oh I that. that scared Whoa. me. Whoa. We were, born, we were born in the late 1900s. <laughs> Whoa. And that's how they refer to us. 
<laughs> wow. Anyways. There's a point at which you look back, you look back and it, it's the way the human brain works. Yeah. Year, like you look back in the last five years as separate years, but then you get to a certain point and you start to look at time frame, timelines in terms of decades. Mm. Like I don't look at 1995 and 1996 and 1997 now as separate years. I look at them as a separate decade in my life. Mm. You know what I mean? Whereas the last five years I look at it as five separate years because I can vividly remember how each of them went. That was a bit of a challenge with writing the book Ooh. is it started to I get bet. to a point where things were it wasn't quite decades but it was like two and three year chunks yes and i had to really go back and it's weird doing research on yourself when did this happen yeah <laughs> yeah you so, know what really screws things up when you haven't had the same email address like if you change oh, yeah. from hotmail to gmail and you're like yeah. i gotta find out like i lost a bunch of my demo tapes from um because i didn't physically yeah. put them caught you know they were on a hotmail account and, they're gone and i lost i got that hotmail account was hacked and they're gone or if you just change companies yeah. You know, if you're an at oh. Apple and then you're at Microsoft, you lose all your stuff on your yes. old company. Mm -hmm. And they want yeah. that. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, theirs. I found some videos <laughs> that I made from Virgin Radio Calgary on my computer randomly because I had my hard drive switched over when I bought a new computer a couple times. And I was like, Jesus, like, <laughs> I look like a different person. And it was seven years ago. Mm -hmm. But it was like I was a kid. Like, I was 23. I was a kid. Have you had the post, uh, the pre and post marriage confusion in your head? Or, Not or yet. Like no, isolation? I mean, I just got married last January, it's right? Too new. So, I too can't new. wait till you have a kid. Because that one is, I think, is gonna smack you in the face. They say long days, short years. Yeah. With kids. Aww. Yeah. 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 <laughs> stuff makes me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else in the world. Kids, kids and dogs. So kids and dogs. Kids and dogs. <laughs> long days, short years. That's amazing. All right, let's move on to the next series here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we've said enough about St. Louis. and I don't know what else you say about Winnipeg. I mean, St. Louis came in and steals, steals one in Winnipeg. I think Winnipeg's still got a great shot in this series. I don't really, I mean, I think St. Louis would tell you that. you got to watch it with the damn penalties, though. They do. Yeah. They do. Calgary, Colorado, We. I guess we were on Calgary, oh, yeah. Colorado. That, yeah, when we were on. I don't believe Mike Smith. But one thing about the Jets, Patrick Line, I scored. Shut up, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> got a couple messages about that. Yeah, so Calgary, <laughs> Calgary Colorado, we did. Let's move on to San Jose and L.A. Again, another series where people were like, I guess you should. Like, all the Sharks fans yeah. were like, oh, you believe in San Vegas. San Jose and Vegas. See, that's what I meant. Sorry, did oh, I not say that? You said, you said L.A. Ah, San Jose, yeah. Vegas. Yeah. All the Sharks fans were like, hey, uh, you know, we're still here. We're still great. Okay, great. <laughs> like, I mean, listen. Uh, oh, to me, the big shut up there was Eric Carlson looked fantastic. Um, I mean, again, that's one where I go, that's one game. Right. You know what I mean? And it's a little bit different than the Jake Gardner thing where, like, Babcock is still managing his minutes even though it's in the middle of the playoffs. Carlson's expected to come in and be Eric Carlson right 28 away. 28-minute Eric Carlson, though. Yeah, he only, I think it was 22 and a half, which Dude. is a lot for most. It's not very much for him. Um, and uh, he looked great, mm -hmm. and he was a big reason why they won. And Brent Burns obviously stepping up, too. Uh you know, I thought this was a bit of a toss-up. I think they're both very good teams with uh, crappy ends to the season. One goalie has a better track record of pulling a rabbit out of their hat in the playoffs, and that goalie doesn't play for the Sharks. So it's one game. We'll see how the rest go. All right. Uh, I'm saving T Tampa and Columbus for last, but yeah. I had probably the most fun I've had watching a hockey game other than a Leaf game. Which honestly, right up until now, they hadn't been a lot of fun to be to, to watch. <laughs> but man, was the Islanders Pittsburgh game fun to watch! What wow, a great series! Wow, what a great! And you talk about a series where, if you're a team in the East, you're like, please go seven, yeah, please beat the hell out of each other for seven straight games. Uh, it's a war. It's a war. Neither of those teams is going to come out healthy. I think wasn't it? Chris Letang was banged up. <coughs> Excuse me. Which very, is an evergreen statement. I know. Uh, poor guy. Uh, very early in the game. Um, and <laughs> it was so funny. Matt Barzell, uh, underrated story. He's had such a hell of a time scoring goals. Puts on that ridiculous move in overtime. Hits the post. Yep. Thank goodness Josh Bailey uh, buried it for them. I, I hope that series is a war. As, as a guy who cheers for another team in the East. What was interesting, though, it was a war... <laughs> But it moved. 
Like sometimes when you hear war, it's just like, oh, we're going to fight each other. Like especially from the if you you know grew up watching hockey in the dead puck era, which we did, uh, where there'd be twenty shots and the other team Every got game seventeen took four shots. Hours. Yeah, it was just brutal <laughs> to watch sometimes, <laughs> uh, especially in the playoffs. War then meant this slow slugfest. This is like this way, that way, yeah, this way. The that Islanders, way. Islanders, the Islanders, trading chances with the Pittsburgh. Penguins. The Penguins are the underdogs. And coming out on top. Yeah. Like, in your life, since Sidney Crosby has started playing hockey, since, say, let's say, the first year they made the playoffs when Recky was still playing, okay? Yeah. yeah. Has it ever been a good idea to trade chances with the Pittsburgh Penguins? No. Do you ever win when you trade chances with the Pittsburgh Penguins? No, and Crosby... I mean, we, we talked about all the guys I criticized who ended up turning in good Game 1 performances. Crosby was very mortal. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And the Islanders did it. They traded chances. Robin Leonard again, which he's been the story all year. Mm-hmm. Robin Leonard coming in there, making it happen. And all the you know disappointing Game 1 performances on home ice, OT winner right there in Nassau. Awesome. It's beauty. How many points does Sidney Crosby have in the regular season? This past regular yeah, season? Tough one. Don't you know? know. It was probably like the least notable 92 points he's ever scored. Adam? I'm going to say 87. He had because 100 of... points. Fuck off. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no one noticed. Sidney Crosby put up triple digits this year. This is why. Oh, unnoticed. my God. If one leaf had had 100 points this year, we'd be, we would have erected the statue. Look up Jonathan Huberto. Look up Jonathan Huberto. You'll never believe it. This is why era adjusted stats matter. Yeah. You know, this guy put up career high this season. This guy, it wasn't even impressive this season. Scoring <laughs> is up league wide. How many points did Jonathan Huberto on the shitty, didn't even make the playoffs, joke of a team this year, Florida Panthers score? He had 92 points. He had 92 points. Jonathan Huberto. Yeah. You wouldn't even name him as the best player on that team. Probably not. Barkov. By yeah. far. If Hoffman would played like his potential. Maybe one day. Like, but no, yeah. dude. Ninety-two points. No one, no one <laughs> gave noticed. a shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I would love to know. Uh, I'd have to look it up. What the uh, era adjusted stats are for this year? Because it's got to dock everyone points. Because it it was. I think recently the numbers have barely came down. It's like okay, this is what the points should uh, have historically basically been. After a series of low-scoring seasons, Th- this is like we're starting to creep into like what it was in like sort of 90, 1996, hmm. like just before the dead puck era, but it's going the opposite way, which is great. It's a lot of fun. So yeah. it'll be like the new eighties. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Except a little better. A little better. Yeah. Make helmets not mandatory again. <laughs> they didn't Screw- kn- like goalies didn't know what the butterfly was until like ninety two. No, <laughs> yeah, it's just bad. they literally were and, not, and athletes. they had literal feathers and leather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's it's a little ridiculous. They look like catchers. In yeah, baseball. there yeah. was a there was a video everybody's I saw pads today. were brown. <laughs> yeah, there was there was a video I saw today of this Soviet goalie, Soviet, in 1984 doing these like squat lunges on Trechiak. the ground. It might have been Trechiak, but I was thinking, like, imagine how much of a gronk that guy was. Compared to all the other goalies in 1984. And I'm looking at it like that, that's a joke. The other guys would like, hey, we want a game. Let's go for five beers at the bar. Yeah, uh, I, heard, Tonight. I heard a great story once upon a time. I won't say the names. But there was this young goalie who he was a, uh, like a teenager at the time. He ended up playing in the NHL. And he uh, got off the ice. And the goalie going on the ice after him was a current NHL goalie. Uh, current at the time. And... Uh, he noticed that the goalie just got in the net. Um, and he's like, he asked him, he's like, you know, don't you do stretches or anything? Like, what What if you pull a muscle? And the goalie responded, you can't pull fat. <laughs> ah, this, was, this was like 20 years ago. Wow. Or, well, uh, 25 years ago or so. Wow. It's not the same. It's not. Not it's at not all. It's not the same. So imagine what today's scorers who have increased offense in this era would do to goalies who aren't even athletes. Every game would be 13-12. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But goalies are among the best athletes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, and, the, now, and they're huge, yeah. too. Like, imagine the fact that, like, Darren Pang 
working for NBC now. Yeah. He is 5'9". And looks no, at all. No, he's not. Oh, well, or <laughs> he, let me let me look that up. Let me look that up. Darren Pang was an NHL goalie. Yeah. If you if you were to dig Darren Pang's skeleton up, <laughs> three thousand four thousand no th- three three thirty thousand years from now, and you're like, wow, we're investigating this human race that used to exist. And you and you put Freddie Anderson next to him, they'd be a different species. Freddie Anderson, first of all, is like two hundred and twenty pounds. Darren Pang, one hundred and fifty five pounds. Which was me in like grade seven, honestly five or six. <laughs> oh my god! Um, was five foot five. Wow, five foot five. Wow, he didn't play many NHL games, but, but he, he played eighty-one. He made the league. <laughs> he made the league. Eighty-one more ben than I have. Bishop is six six. I think he's six seven. I think he's even taller. Well, what is he with skates on too? Right, like, oh, like even that. Yeah, he's like yeah. basketball big at that point. <laughs> you, you know the you meme. Play for the rap. <laughs> yeah. you, you know the meme about Small like forward. a guy guy who's five eleven and he's you know this big, and guy who's six feet tall and he's huge, yeah. and it's supposed to apply to girls. Okay, it's not necessarily true, but it is true for goalies. Yeah, if you're under six foot. Yep. In 2019, you basically need not apply unless you're like who. <laughs> UC Soros? <laughs> yeah, who may actually end up starting... Like, they played UC Soros, by the way, over 30 games. I meant to mention this during when we were talking about Nashville. I bet UC Soros gets a start in this... Soros gets a start in Game 3 if Game 2 doesn't go well. Just mm. throwing that out there. A few goalies with a short leash. Um, and, uh, Carolina... Remember, Hol- Hol- sorry, sorry, no, remember when Holpe wasn't the starter for half of the first series in Washington last year? Grubauer. Like, versus, uh, Grubauer Which is starting. why I would have gone with Grubauer if you're Colorado. Well, they might. They might next... Yeah, next yeah. game. And also, the year the Ducks won the Cup, Brzezgalov played the whole first series. Wow. Yeah, yeah I think that was because of an injury. And but... the uh, Matt Murray, Marc-Andre Fleury year. Yeah, so much stuff. And no one remembers who started. It's, hold, it's, hold it's a cup. <laughs> hey, remember? Hey! It's it's one of those. Yeah. It's the, yeah, it's just who's in net for the, the Cup winning game. Okay, so we got Caps and Canes. Oh, by the way, sorry. Some people were. No, nope, we don't. No, we don't. My, not. my bad. My we bad. Don't. We've been iceberging. <laughs> no, no, iceberg. no, some people were like, "Why the hell is Sparks backing up?" Michael Hutchinson, uh, his wife gave birth. That's right. So and he's... everybody's healthy, which is great. And everyone's we, healthy. Uh, healthy was is great. So. We like that. Uh, do we think a we little should... more applause, please, for healthy oh, babies, yeah. please? Babies, Thank you. Yes. Should we? Uh, should the Leafs start Sparks on uh, Saturday? God no. I think they should. Get out of the studio. I think Anderson's done. Get out of the studio. I (laughs) think Boston should start Sparks. Yes. Oh, my God. The first ever 60-save shutout in a playoff game. (laughs) It would have to happen. Uh, Hurricanes and Capitals. Obviously, Caps went up 3-0. Hard to come back, but the Hurricanes did make it 3-2, and I believe Washington got a late goal. I'm not sure if it was an empty netter, but it doesn't matter. That was a game. You see the great uh, Manny tweet? It was, no, what did he say? He just tweeted, I got up and screamed at the television. And it's just all the players bunched up on one side of the ice. Yeah. And one guy standing alone. Who is... Oh, it's Alex Ovechkin. Dude, he's been in the league since 2005. 14 years people have been forgetting he exists. It's a masterclass of his teammates. What the Washington Capitals, through multiple coaches, multiple teammates, the, the way they constantly make Alexander Ovechkin invisible is just a spectacle to behold. How do you forget that arguably the greatest goal scorer of all time exists? <laughs> it's unbelievable. I I I agree. I 100% agree. It's on, it's crazy that no one's figured him out. Good on the Hurricanes to fight back though. They looked like the way I expected them to look. Outmatched, but Scrap. Wow. <laughs> look, look at that! Oh, Jesse, you got to throw that screenshot up. That's the greatest there's, goal scorer in NHL history. There's at least yes. 15 <laughs> feet between Ovechkin and the closest defender. Where's the... F- oh, th- are they on the power play? Yeah. Why are all in- four canes over there? <laughs> Against oh three God. caps. Oh, it's hilarious. Dude. Do you think Mrazek's going, hey! I think so. Guys! <laughs> wow. <laughs> By the oh way, Peter Morazic was left on the scrap heap by Detroit. He's in the playoffs, starting. Interesting. He's always been that kind of goalie, though. He's weird. Yeah, he is. He's, I think maybe he'd come to his end of his time in Detroit and needed a fresh start. Yeah, he's a goalie's goalie. Weird. <laughs> Super freaking weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a comedian's comedian. Super weird. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, last series, Tampa Bay Columbus. Does this not remind you so much of Leafs Caps? Except the current Columbus Blue Jackets are a lot better than the 2016-17 Leafs. 
That's a team that loaded up. You know how every year we say they might not make the playoffs, but watch out if they do, and it usually ends up being crap? <laughs> this is a weird case study of it maybe actually being a thing. What do people say? Oh, they, you know, they might not make it, but what if they do? Uh, you see? Uh. Who was that last year? <laughs> um... Uh, who are the two wild card teams in either conference? I can't even remember. Oh, man, I can't remember. That's the thing. They usually don't stick and you don't remember them. You know who was a team? Who... L.A. did it. When L.A. won the cup. L.A. did it. Yes. Yes. And it's it's very rare that it happens, but they made the Jeff Carter trade and it changed everything. So this is last year, Jesse? Mm-hmm. Uh, Colorado, they didn't do anything. L.A. L.A. I thought would beat Vegas, but that was different. They're playing an expansion team. Columbus played... Washington. Oh, jeez, they almost did it. And the Devils, uh, oh, they were almost caught by the Panthers. No one really had a chance last year. Um, This is different, though, because it's so rare that the team that just squeaks its way in is the team that loaded up the most. Mm -hmm. You know what it reminds me of? And a team that was garbage on paper. And if you ever go back and look at it, you go, wait, sorry, how did this team make the playoffs, let alone win the Cup? The 2006 Carolina Hurricanes. Go look at what their team was on paper. They stunk. And at the deadline, they added Mark Recchi and Doug Waite. Right. And actually, they were down 2-0 to Montreal in the first round. Uh, They said, enough of you, Martin Gerber. Let's go to our young, scrappy backup who had garbage numbers in the regular season named Cam Ward, who won the damn Conn Smythe. Um, and has made tons of money ever since. Yes. And made a believer out of for, people for 10 years, forever. 15 years. Can't wait to see who gives them three mil this summer. Um, this is different because it's not, I mean, Carolina, they stunk on paper, I thought. And they got a little lucky with the goaltending situation. Columbus was a good team. Mm-hmm. At no point this season was Columbus a bad team. That's true. And they loaded up, and I think it screwed up their chemistry a little bit for a while. As soon as they figured it out, which they did, down the stretch, they were scary. Now, I don't know what the hell possessed them that made them go down 3 nothing, but they stormed back and won. And it wasn't just that Columbus looked good, Tampa looked bad. You're, you're walking Victor Hedman. How do you score four goals in a gimme game against Andre Vasilevsky? Man, like, how don't you feel a human chill crawl up your spine if you're a Tampa Bay Lightning fan right now? What do you do next year if you lose this? I don't know. What do you do this offseason? If you're the Lightning, continue to be friggin' sick. Yeah, like, Like, certain times, sometimes (laughs) sometimes you don't do anything. Sometimes you don't. Like, I would say with the Leafs, like, re-sign Marner, keep the team. Try to keep Gardner, uh, put the team together, and go, like, like, whatever happens, keep this team together. Just keep the team together. You don't think it's a situation like the Raptors in terms of you can't run this back? Well, the thing is, the difference is that DeMar DeRozan was like, is he the is he a top 30 player in the NBA? Probably not. He's he, proven this year that he's not. So, he would tell you FOH. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Kyle Lowry that. might be. Might no, be. No, would, you don't think so? No, not think, top 30. No. There's, okay. I think there's 30 guys. So Kucherov oh. and Stamkos are top 30 players. Right? Sure. Those are your two main guys. So that's what I would say. With the, with the Raptors, they had two guys who were performing well together. But were they great? No. Did mm-hmm. they bring in great this year? The Raptors yes. were, the, were the Carolina Hurricanes in 2006. Tampa has great. But in terms of like the team success, how many times you, can you keep going with this Tampa lineup and then you lose in the first round to Columbus and then eventually you got to say, it, something here isn't working in the playoffs. That might be the coach. And a couple bi- he oh. just signed an extension. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but he <laughs> the, just signed the, an extension. The talent think, is there. Yeah. Now we are overreacting to one game. <laughs> no, but it's just a discussion. But the talent it's the is there. The fashion in which they lost as well. <laughs> That's the key. That's so, it. If it's a heartbreaker in game 7, you could chalk it up to shitty luck. We should have been better. Puck bounces. Yeah, way, it's a chaotic yeah. game. Oh, yeah. Adam, you can there's nothing at stake for you. We're talking about hockey man here. I just don't see... I think more mistakes are made after bad playoff losses than not. If you mm-hmm. look at... Like, Brian Burke always says that July 1st is when GMs make their most mistakes wrong. It's after a bad playoff loss. Anaheim Ducks are a perfect example. Mm-hmm. Kessler's contract, firing Bruce, Bruce Boudreaux, 
Um, Chicago Blackhawks. Hiring Randy Carlisle. Chicago Blackhawks losing to, uh, with that Nashville. Pinarin disastrous and they, oh, yeah. they let it ruin them until they won the draft lottery two years later. Freaking... Right? When will something go right for the Chicago Blackhawks? <laughs> um, it's, it's just so brutal. And a really key thing heading into the summer, though, the Braden Point contract is a huge monkey mm-hmm. wrench, so we'll see what that is. But also, I can't remember when it was, but I think it was relatively close to the season beginning. Steve Eiserman stepped down mm-hmm. and gave over the reins to Breezewa. Julian Breezewa. Julian Breezewa, thank you. Former agent. Former agent. And he didn't do a whole heck of a lot to the team and he was there the whole time so to be fair it's different what would you do mm-hmm. right and and also he helped build the team so it's different than bringing in a new guy who goes ah i'm gonna you know change everything up but he hasn't quite put that stamp on the team boy you better hope he doesn't do anything stupid my question would One be <laughs> what are the chances the tampa bay lightning are better talent wise this season Sorry, next season than this. And I would say, I would put that at zero. Yeah. And the reason I would say that is Braden Point's contract, Kucherov's contract's already signed, you've got mm-hmm. Stammer, but that means that you're going to have to drop someone. So is that, is it your depth guys? Is it, well, I mean, Kalorin, you'd love to get rid of that contract. Callahan, you'd love to get rid of that contract. Uh, Tyler Johnson, maybe. But Tyler's, TJ's the guy that you want to keep keep in that third line role. Uh, uh, who's the other guy that, that Dubas loved and that they found and he was amazing? It wasn't Braden. Oh, Yanni Gordy. Yanni Gord. Yanni, Gord, uh, sorry. Yanni Gord's a guy that teams see real value in. So if you take an Alex Kalorn, we'll give you Yanni Gord situation. Yeah. Now we're doing to the Pl- like plus do prospects to the and picks or whatever. Like so, oh Marner's going to make all this money. That means we got to trade Johnson or Cap. There's fat. There is fat to be cut. Uh, that Ryan Callahan contract, that Alex Kalorn contract, mm-hmm. that um, the McDonough Girardi, the McDonough extension kicks in next year. Yeah, but he's been great. But there is fat to cut. Yep. And knowing Tampa, friggin', they probably got some guy we've never heard of who's going to throw up 30 next year. Yeah. (laughs) So who knows? Could they be more skilled next season? Yes. Interestingly, (laughs) now that we throw this out there, because the the Leafs are in a similar spot with Marner and his contract, um, John Shannon said today, and I just think you guys will be like, we'll just love this because it, it, now the narrative changes. Yeah. I can't wait. Steep compensation could make Marner offer sheet unlikely. You don't say. <laughs> wait, you're telling me if the Leafs pay Mitch Marner a lot of money? No, they're saying that no, because Marner will want offer. so much money that nobody will want to give up four first round picks. So the offer sheet oh, would be unlikely. Breaking That's how news! It, works. <laughs> it costs a lot to offer it's, sheet someone. You gotta give something. Get <laughs> it's almost as John though, Shannon send. <laughs> it's almost as though we said that from the beginning, though. It's Who's, almost like that's how the rules of offer sheets work. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, but but isn't it interesting that the conversation will change? Because now, because Mitch Marner scored a goal last night, now it's back up to twelve million a year. And you know what? At this point, the season he had, fuck it, give him twelve. I don't care. He's also playing care. with John Tavares, so his numbers are a little. Uh, yeah, and I might say like, that. If but even Matthews if Matthews was on JT's line, he'd put up oh, hundred points for <laughs> sure. Hey, for sure. But if if okay, put put it this way: if Mitch gets ten, let's say it's ten million, sure. and it's an eight-year deal, and it's fantastic, everybody's happy, walks away. There's no hot takes like after the Matthews contract. The fact that any team was ever going to consider offer shitting Mitch Marner and trying to drag his ass out of Toronto, who he grew up idolizing and loving, yeah. you're going to have to pay him a max deal, which we have not yet seen in the NHL. Now, There's no way it's going to happen. Can I throw something out? I hope, I want Mitch Marner so badly to be this city's Batman. I want him to be the hero we deserve. Mm hmm. I well no, Batman's not the hero you deserve. Yeah. Oh, he's not. He's what is he? No, he's that's the White Knight. That's uh, that's uh, who ends up being Two Face. Um, oh, oh my God, Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent is the hero they deserve. Yeah. Sorry, Harvey Dent's the hero. Is it? Is no, it? My oh, gosh. God damn it! We're screwing this up. <laughs> Listen, I want Mitch Martin. Okay, what if he's the guy who takes a discount? Now, again, for all the reasons you just laid out, I know his dad. I know his agent. I know all But Mitch this. is his own man. Can I read can Mitch I read the quote man. from yes, the Yes, Please Dutch, read right? the quote that we just <laughs> took a hacks on to. You thought you hated us for a lack of math knowledge last episode. Ah, you thought math was the worst we could do. Commissioner Gordon says he's the hero Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs right now. So we'll hunt him because he can take it. Because he's not our hero. He's a silent guardian. 
a watchful protector. And then the Joker says some stuff, and then Gordon continues. He says, because we have to chase him, because he's the hero Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs right now. So we'll hunt him because he can take it. He's the watchful protector, a dark knight. Wow. So anyway, I hope Mitch Martyr takes a discount. I think that's Jake Gardner. So I don't don't know if that applies to Mitch Martyr at all. We we chase down Jake Gardner. That's who we do. That Jake Gardner is our Dark Knight. There's no question. So I'm convinced. I I just want to point this out because a lot of fans might not know, but it's been a slowly, it's been a thing we've been making fun of recently, a little bit. And I mean, I sort of use my Instagram for this a little bit, but here's Mitch Martyr's Instagram. Uh, Four days ago, a Visa commercial with William Nylander. Uh, April 5th, it's an Azaro perfume ad. Uh, what do we got? April 3rd, a good food ad. Uh, <laughs> you got March, Intact, Red Bull. March 28th was uh, Intact. Then he just did a little St. Patrick's Day thing. A Red Bull ad, a Chevrolet ad, and then Intact, Intact, Red Bull. Dude makes, I would not be surprised if he made more in endorsements than Austin Matthews. Oh yeah, and Matthews has some big deals, but Marner, Marner. Um... They did the iPhone commercial, man. Oh, and the iPhone. Mitch Marner was in a video tweeted by Tim Cook of Apple. So Marner was... and Austin yeah, Matthews. Yeah, so was Matthews. So. Yeah, so was Matthews. That's pretty sweet. He is making bank. And so, like, but dude, if he leaves Toronto, some of that goes. Yes, like this is this is what I'm saying. I'm so sick. Of uh, Wolf, Florida with the tax. Yeah, Toronto with the other... Th- that's our state tax. Yeah. We have... There's more money here for that. There's so... In, f- in Florida, if you're in Tampa, mm-hmm. are the are the Lightning right now the top team? Sure. If the Bucks were ever great again, if they were ever... If they were ever 2004 winning a Super Bowl Bucks, I don't know. And you can make money on perception. Yes. Yes, you can. So let me throw this out there. Okay, Marner could easily ask for like a contract that I've thrown out there before is Marner could sign for eleven point five like Matthews did, but over eight, mm-hmm. which would be wonderful. What about? And you'll be fabulously rich. What if, Adam? I want to sell something at a store, and it's worth about ten bucks. So when you throw it on the shelf, what is the listed price? Fifteen. No. Twenty. No, Adam, the listed price, you want to entice the shopper. Wait, so you make it nine ninety nine. Oh, okay, 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 sorry. <laughs> I thought you were the supplier and I'm the guy who's got to do the market. No, my bad. Plus taxes. What if Mitch Marner signed for, don't care about the n- number of years, 9.95 mil? What if he signed for something like that? You can make, think of how beloved he would be. Tavares, mm. thank God he had the season he did. Because I think people would have turned so quick because yep. of that dollar amount. Imagine he he scored in the first game. Boom. Get it right out of the way. That was great. What if he doesn't score in his first five? What do we hear from people? Oh, Dude, uh, he was scoring and Jeff O'Neill was like, we, they didn't get him to, to tip goals in from behind. Which is like, <laughs> that that's hilarious. exactly what Tavares' game is. And now it's a meme. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's a meme. And, and scored one of the prettiest empty net goals you know I've ever the, seen. You know one of the best things that happened this year? Mm. Nikita Kucherov. Yes. 129 points. Uh, 9.5 million. It's unreal. So, so unreal. how does Mitch Marner sit there and say he needs more than Nikita Kucherov? And the Leafs Easy. will argue that. <laughs> Easy. The Leafs will argue that until December 1st. <laughs> Damn it! But like, you, you... I smell another sit-out coming. Uh, Duba said that'll never happen again. Yeah. So, but, interesting. But the cap, the cap era changes things. It mm-hmm. changes perception. Like, dude, okay, you saw last night... Uh, I saw everyone magically wake up to, damn, Connor Brown's having a game. Connor Brown is a fine depth player. It's his contract that ruins it for everybody. The salary cap has changed the way that we see it. Mitch Marner signs for a hair under $10 million. He garen frigging tees. He is the most popular Toronto Maple Leaf. Forever. For at least his tenure as a Leaf. At least his tenure as a Leaf. Well, and more he never popular than Matthews, he never pays more... for a drink, never pays for food, never pays to stay anywhere. And he can because he's still rich. But people would be like, you're a hero. Oh, my God. Do you think Leafs alumni would cheer against this core of Leafs because then it makes them lesser? Oh, I think it's already done that. 
<laughs> and no, no like, they've accepted it. They've accepted. It. I love yeah. I love Wendell Clark. Um, the first the you ever hear Wendell Clark talk about the first game he saw Matthews? He no. was like, "Uh oh, <laughs> my rookie record's in trouble." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because if this core wins, then like, what do we care about the mid two thousands? Well, it would be nice to stop. We never we talk about ninety three more than the mid two thousands, and That's the true. and the mid two thousands like the sorry ninety eight. To 2004 were far more successful than the early 90s for the Leafs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I don't know why we don't talk about those two runs to the conference final against Buffalo and against Carolina in four more. Years. Yeah, in four mm-hmm. years. Uh, yeah, because yeah, they never years. did it with Belfour. Four years. Um, but and they could have. There was a man. Belfour had some good seasons they too. Should have. They honestly could have won the cup in 2004. Yeah, <laughs> they lost in the second round. But I, I think the thing is that I would. I just. This is, here's here's a third. Remember how I told you I want I want the Leafs to win so everybody will shut up and Neilander score so everybody will shut up. I want the Leafs to win the cup so everybody will shut up about ninety three. Not because I didn't love it, not because you didn't love it, not because Doug Gilmore isn't my favorite Leaf all time, which he absolutely is. He was the reason I fell in love with the sport. But I'm done. Yeah. There's been how many books written about a play? We are talk. We write books in this town about a playoff. That never even made the finals. There was a, oh my! There's a entire. There's a, there was a parade for the '93 Leafs. Really? Fucking embarrassing. The, 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 we we got to erase that. No, I don't know if that's embarrassing because I'm all about celebrating your players. Tavares Day TL forever. On. But <laughs> that's so. Saluting a player before a game is different than a friggin' parade for a team that didn't win shit. Okay, fair enough. But, you know, to be honest with you, it was like exercising demons. They hadn't been there for, like, you know, 20 years. Yeah, fair enough. But I, I didn't have to watch the 80s and that, Leafs. You're this right. is not against the 93 team. It's against the people. Like, David, Damian Cox wrote a book called The Last Great Year in Hockey, and he said it was 92-93. <laughs> it was a great year, but, oh, is he referring to the Leafs? He, well, he, that general? was part of it, but he said hockey, <laughs> that was when it was at its best, and it hasn't been good since. And he, because Damian Cox continues to believe. yesterday? He continues that's, to believe that's an atrocious take. <laughs> yeah, he continues to believe that the maximum amount of pro teams you should have is twenty one, that there aren't enough good players to support this many roster spots. This is which not true. would have been true if we were still doing face punchers like Colt Noor and, and yeah. Fraser McLaren in the lineup. But as we found when you ice four four pretty good lines, you know, even Tyler Ennis on your fourth line, Connor Brown on your fourth line, look at that. There are NHL players enough for those four lines. It's just teams weren't doing it. And and hockey is bigger than that than it's ever been. More people are playing it than, than has ever happened before. And the skills that these players have now are so above and beyond crazy. Crazy yeah. what the '90s guys or the '80s guys could have done, but that's that's the old school take. I want people to leave the late or the early '90s alone, yeah. especially Leaf fans. Put it, to bed. it was such a great time. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. There was unfulfilled potential. The Leafs, Canadians in the finals, which, by the way, I'm sorry, the Canadians would have fucking won. Yeah, um, they they <laughs> like, won. look at their team: Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer. Wah, Wah. Chelios, well, Desjardins. Wah, uh, yeah, like just Wah. You weren't going to beat the no. '93 Montreal. Canadians. Canadians, because no one was going to beat the Montreal Canadiens in 93. Not even Gretzky could do it. Not even Gretzky could do it. But my point in all of this is saying that we got to let it go. I want this team to win so we can shut up up about the other stuff. Let's write some new damn history here, for God's sakes. But I'm just saying, in the salary cap era, perception is an enormous thing. Mm -hmm. You're right. wouldn't even have to be the best Leaf if he signs for nine point nine five million, he guarantees he has the most popular jersey in the city. He's, uh, you know, the most popular uh, commercial guy, and he makes the most money, and he gets the most leash. He mm-hmm. gets the most leeway. He goes a few games without scoring. That's all right. Bitch. Well, imagine, imagine he scores the same amount of points this year, and Matthew scores at the same rate, and Matthew scores comes in just under Marner. Yeah. Matthew's making eleven. Marner's making nine. Now, I mean. Who could possibly watch game one? And by the way, I got to put money in the Marner jar for this whole conversation. But who could possibly watch game one and go, yeah, Marner should take a discount? No, you can't. I, I'm just saying, like, you know, Tampa Bay guys took a discount because they wanted to keep the team together and they wanted to win and the whole state tax thing. Marner is, I, I would love to know what he's making. The state tax here is the money you can make here, the extra money you can make here. Yeah, and like long after his career is over. Mm hmm. Darcy Tucker's in commercials. Like I had like one thirty goal season with the Leafs, and I loved him. <laughs> like, like, and you know he wasn't he wasn't beloved because of his goal scoring. No, it was yeah. the way he played. 
is the way it's not a knock on Tucker. No, it's just, I think it's he was, not. Yeah, like what I'm saying is he, Matthews already had more thirty goal seasons. He had huge. more in his first season. <laughs> <laughs> Matthews probably had more thirty goal seasons now or like so far in his career than any Leaf who played in the nineties. <laughs> I'd love to know. Um, listen, ah, oh, that's all. That's I've all. It, I've said it a thousand times. Mitch Marner. If he did that, he is in no position to have to do that. But if he did it, he's guaranteeing himself he is the most popular Leaf for a decade minimum. A minimum of a decade. Press conference. That's really interesting. He's not going to do that. Well, because I, I mean, here's would, the thing: if though, his I, agent, wouldn't you choke him? If, <laughs> I would, but I also would like. I would also say, yeah, but like 15 percent of that's going to escrow, and you know what doesn't go to escrow? My Red Bull money and my intact money and my like. I, I don't think people realize how much money goes to the agent, goes mm. to escrow, mm. goes to taxes. You don't if you're if you're in a market like this, you really your income potential is huge. You could argue that he's already the most popular leaf. Argue it. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if I don't know if there's argument. a I don't know if there's an argument to be made there. Uh, I think he absolutely is. Yeah, and hmm. not necessarily because he's the best, but he's definitely the most fun to watch. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Matthews just does this crazy ninja shit out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um, man, he is in a position to do something truly special for the city if he wanted to. I he's already he already does it every time he takes the ice. So he's in no position to have to. Here's a fun fact that just came up on. On Twitter, for some reason, sorry, Jesse, uh-huh. to interrupt. No, go ahead. The Oilers are currently paying Coffee, Paul Coffee. Oh, the Oilers hadn't come up yet. It's <laughs> half a million dollars a year. For what? Play left wing. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. They could have, they could overpay five analytics people for that. Because <laughs> well, analytics doesn't even pay 100k, which it should. But <sighs> oh my god, what do they pay the rest of them? One thing the Oilers aren't is cash poor. No. If they wanted to change this round, they uh, 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 turn this around, they couldn't a second. Yep. Oh my God. Guys. Anyway, sorry, Jesse. Go ahead. We um, almost made it a full show. I know. This is from <laughs> Leo Munmayer. What? You get five more years of Ron Hainsey or Patrick Marlowe. Who do you have to keep on the roster? This, what? This is a hypothetical. You have to keep one of Patrick Marlowe. Or Ron Hainsey on in the, the roster? starting lineup for five, for five years? more years. Ooh. Who do you pick? Marlowe. Marlowe, one hundred percent, because he like, can skate. The fourth, well, in the fourth <laughs> line exists. Yeah, there's nowhere to hide on defense. There's only six of them. Yep. Yeah. There's twice as many forwards. <laughs> you could bury him on the fourth line, and play him four minutes a night if you wanted. That's a, such a dark, <laughs> strange question. And, um, and yet I like it. This is from Lucas. Lucas Wester won. We hadn't talked about this on the show, and he wanted to know, how was your Our Town, Our Crown Real Sports event? It was amazing. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, a thank you to fun. everybody who came. Chaos. Like, I, there were so many people there. Dude, Daryl Settler was there taking pictures with people. Did you set eyes on him? I never I never saw him. Never saw him. I didn't even see him. We There's introduced photo him. photo evidence that he was there. I, I didn't even see him. I like pointed over at him at one point because I knew the general direction of where he was. But it was I didn't even see him. It's funny um, when you when you when you have these events because you know obviously it's the Steve Dangle podcast. People want to meet Steve, and what's so funny about it is that like you could tell people had had been to your book signings because they just formed a very orderly queue and and lined up. <laughs> and I was expecting then, that. I was like mid conversation like, with and people, it, and there's a line. It was based on where Steve happened to be standing when yeah. the doors opened. Like it, there was no reason for it. It just that's where he was. There was this one poor guy who got in nice and early, and he's like, "I'm gonna grab a table right here." And there was just a lineup the whole time. He's, he's trying to. He's trying to like eat. <laughs> There's a lineup in front of his table the whole time. And so the other thing, which was amazing, uh, which was was that Jesse and I were sort of where we were. And so after they'd met you, they they queued up and met us. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. hilarious. <laughs> so uh, I have to say, like, we have we're very lucky. Uh, we feel very lucky because every time we get to meet you at events, um, and we haven't done a lot, and we know that, but we've got a ton of stuff happening. Um, I got to tell you, it's so it's so nice to know who's listening and what kind of people they are, uh, and yeah. it's it's character, right? Like you just and I don't want to put too much into the character thing, right? Oh, yeah, uh, sure. But I, I actually do when you know when you meet people and they are genuinely um, awesome, 
awesome and everything you hoped. And uh, I'm blown away every time we do one and just blown away by what you remember. Because people will be like, hey, remember when you said that? And I'm like, nope. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's one story in the book that um, I forgot it happened and I relearned about it from someone who'd been watching the video since the beginning, Peyton, um, when we went to Nashville. He made a joke, and I didn't get it. And he's like, dude, it happened to you. <laughs> it was the thing about, um, if you've read the book, the story from Seat Filler where someone thought I was Rod Brindamore's son. Right, yes. Yeah. And I forgot. I completely forgot that it happened. But That's the second really you mentioned it, it clicked back in. Do you remember the fan who, he was at one of the Leafs tailgate parties per game in uh, Maple Leaf Square, and you gave him tickets to... The Washington series, and you asked him if he was on drugs. Well, yeah, yeah, he yeah, was yeah, there, yeah, yeah. and he told me to bring this up and ask you about it. Do you remember him? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, w- he was, was he on drugs? Around. And he was no. not on drugs. No, he was, and he was like embarrassed. That, that, no, because he came up. There was a dance contest, <laughs> right? And people screamed all kinds of awful things at the contestants. Um, but uh, he got on stage, and he was so out of his mind that. <laughs> All of us, like, involved in the event were like, he's on drugs. <laughs> like, for sure, he's on drugs. But no, he was just really amped, and that's why he won the tickets. <laughs> um, this is another question from our Reddit page. Other than the Leafs, which team would be the most satisfying to win the Stanley Cup? Because last year, uh, like, Washington was a team everybody was Yeah. Was Ovi. So who's this year? Vegas. This year, uh, you think Vegas is this year's Ovi? No. No, no. Last year, last oh, year yeah, was, was a, a final where there's no loser. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's like, ah, it's, they're both great stories. Yeah. They're both, I mean, Vegas you could literally make a movie about. Um, capitals are a little different. Uh, Carolina would be pretty satisfying. You know what would be for me? There's two. Okay. You're going to hate the second one, but let me start with the first. Tampa because mm-hmm. I like to see winners win. And Ugh. I do occasionally like to see winners win. And You're such these, a Steelers fan. Yeah, I, no, I <laughs> Frig off. Uh, I, I, I do like to see sometimes a dominant team just go in and be dominant. That is, that is also part of the fun of sports that no one likes to talk about because mm-hmm. it's always about the underdog. Yeah. But sometimes it's great when dominant team goes Thanos on you. And, True and you go, wow, like the Patriots. Yeah, that's um, why I like the Patriots. What was the year where the Raptors beat the Bulls in the regular season? And we still talk about it. That was the year the Bulls set the record for the best regular season record at the time. Did they win the championship? 95, wasn't it? Uh, did they win the NBA championship? Yeah. That year? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, like, that's that's an example of that happening. Right. So, this would be, I, I don't know, the closest thing to that, I suppose, from a hockey perspective? Here's my other take. Okay. The New York Islanders. Shit, you're right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Lose their GM, lose their coach, replace the coach, replace the GM, lose their top center and franchise player. Come on, tell me that's not. And it's a, a ragtag group, uh, a guy that's recovering from substance abuse issue or yeah. substance. I don't want to say abuse. I don't know. Substance issues. Yeah. Dude, um, every signing looked like a bad idea. Uh, yeah. And now <laughs> they're like, well, key player Valtteri Filpola. And, Dude, and the Komarov contract. Yeah. I love Leo, but holy shit, that's a lot of money. Matt Martin. Hey, there's still time for the Leo Komarov to decay, contract to decay, but he sure looks good. Um, I I think, honestly, man, as much as Leaf fans may hate it, it's a hell of a story. It's a hell of a story. Think of this potential. Oh, this is the potential Islanders road to the cup. Okay. They beat the Penguins. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, for you know, they've played against them many times, back to back cups. Next round, they play the reigning Stanley Cup champions and beat them. Mm-hmm. Conference final, they either play the Lightning, who are the juggernaut, or they play the Snake. They play the Leafs and John Tavares. And then in the final, who gives a shit? Because those that will three be the final. rounds are amazing. It's like when I went to WrestleMania, and the title match was between I think Jericho and the Undertaker, but but the the real match was was the Rock and Hulk Hogan. Oh, WrestleMania eighteen. You were at WrestleMania eighteen. I was at WrestleMania eighteen, cheering for the Rock, and our friend Eric Young, who's mm-hmm. in NXT, said that that is the masterclass in wrestling. He said of all the wrestling matches there have ever been. Yeah. That's the one that they show people 
as the master class because there's a good guy and a bad guy. The good guy is The Rock. The bad guy is Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. And guess who everybody was cheering for? Hulk Hogan. And they turned one mm-hmm. guy. They turned, turned the crowd. heel and face. They turned the crowd. Based on the crowd. No, no. I, it wasn't supposed to go down that way, was it? It was, it was supposed to end up the way it was. But what was happening was people were supposed to cheer for The Rock and they mm-hmm. weren't. And Hulk Hogan and The Rock in, in that ring figured it out together. Yeah. And made it happen. And at the end, you know, when Hulk puts out his hand to shake his hand, that's real. Because they, he knew that they'd done the right thing and they shook hands like that. And that was not supposed, that part was not supposed to happen. Okay. And they said, that is the master class in wrestling. Sometimes wrestling is the coolest thing in the world. It is. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it, really it can yeah. really be really cool. Yeah. 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 And it's it's funny because even a non-wrestling fan yeah. can can relate to something like that, can look at something like that and go, that is performance art. And it truly was. It's so funny because I feel like uh, a lot of the Attitude Era was, hey, what do all you fans want? Okay, we're not going to give it to you. <laughs> and, like intentionally to yeah. string you along uh, this past Wrestlemania I mean not that I'm the biggest wrestling fan anymore but it seemed like they were like alright have everything you want mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so rare that you, that you get that all in one Wrestlemania do you but... see they uh, they sort of botched the ending with Ronda Rousey mm-hmm. yeah it was... I don't her think shoulders. it was as bad as people say yeah it definitely wasn't as bad as oh her shoulders weren't on the mat it, also it's scripted yeah, like, no. <laughs> but also like, it wasn't supposed to end there. No way. You know? No, but like when I think botched, like that to me, that's not a botch. Uh-huh. To me, botched is Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar. Oof. One of the best matches I've ever seen. Lesnar lands on his fucking head yeah. and almost, literally, almost dies. Yeah. Literally, almost dies in the ring. Like everyone, the second we saw it, was like that wasn't supposed to happen, <laughs> and that man might be dead. Like, that's a botch. With uh, the Rousey thing, I was like, oh, yeah, she rolled her up. But it's such an anti... I'm defending the botch. People, oh, the people it's... are upset about the botch, but I sound stupid. It's a huge but... anti-climax. Yeah, yeah. The the other criticism of this past WrestleMania is they had the high of Kofi Mania, followed by, like, two more hours of matches. It's it was WrestleMania's too gotten too long. It's, like, si- it's a six-hour event. Yeah. Like, it starts at, like, 5, and it's done by, like, 11.30 midnight. It's ridiculous. It's... Although it sounds like they're, <laughs> it seems like they're starting a new era a little bit, mm. where they've sort of, uh, it seems like they might be stepping away from the brand split of oh. Raw and SmackDown, so yeah, yeah. we'll see um, what that does. Interesting little wrinkle in the NHL before we go. Boy, the NHL's been been better lately in terms of news. J.P. Barry of CAA Sports has confirmed that they have received Nikita Gusev's contract release from the deputy chairman and vice president of SKA HC uh, Roman Rottenberg, which is, you know, um, St. SK Petersburg. Petersburg, big, big club in uh, the uh, KHL. That's where everyone comes from. <laughs> Gusev is now eligible to sign a one-year deal with the Vegas Golden Knights and play in these playoffs. How is that allowed? Wait, what? He could, yeah, How? so they, the... The Knights are adding a very a guy with star potential right now. The Golden Knights mid playoffs are adding, I think, the top scorer in the KHL. Why is and that allowed? That should not be allowed. I don't think it'll be allowed for long. Yeah, it, uh, dude, they should get rid of it in the next CBA or whatever. Like, it's he should be able to sign the contract. He should not be able. He should, he should not, not be eligible be to play. Eligible for these playoffs. That's absurd. It's a wrinkle, and they've exploited it. And if you're George McPhee. Why wouldn't you? Now, it's technically... so He's technically their property, is yes, he not? Yeah, like, he's let's there. be clear about that. Sorry. They're not just signing some random guy. He They got him in a trade, I'm pretty sure. They got like they did Because he wouldn't come to whatever team drafted him. Tampa? It might have... Uh, it might have been. I don't know. I feel like there's been two goose heads in it screwing me up. Yeah. But um, I don't know if that should be allowed. Well, he's their property, so technically speaking, he's allowed. And okay. and in all honesty, this because the KHL season's over, you know, because the second you play a game in another league, you're ineligible for the NHL. But when the season's over, that expires. Mm. But the KHL season contractually does not end until April 30th. So they had to get special whatever, whatever. I'm sure there was a little bit of elbow grease oh, yeah. involved. Um, it's always been a silly wrinkle. In the KHL, there's. I don't, I don't know, know how you change s- that though. I don't know how you change that in the NHL. How well, can you? Just, you simply convince a Russian to change their mind. No, no. <laughs> but I, what I mean is that no. um, I don't know how you change that rule without it being stupid. If you're not on the roster by X date, by literally the beginning of the playoffs, you're not allowed to play. 
but he's on he's part of the he's part of the organization. So, okay. But it, he wasn't like yesterday. So let's, he, they own their rights, I guess. That's the point. So it's you're saying that if you have like if let's say you went through twenty injuries, now you can't sign anyone. So let's say you the can't Leafs bring had someone in. some guy in Europe who they drafted mm-hmm. and his season ends and they sign him, he could play in game two. Tomorrow. Yes. Yes. He could be Swiss Wayne Gretzky. You know? No. I think you lock you should lock in your rosters. It's 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 more acceptable because he's Vegas property. The fact that he's not even under contract, though. Like, if you have a guy in university or something like that who, you know, finished the school year or some guy in junior, mm-hmm. I get it. It's like, Ian Scott, I think, would be eligible to join the Leafs. Yes. And one of them is. In, in theory. Isn't Wool? Joseph Wool is with the Leafs, but he can't play or else it burns a yada, yada, yada. Okay. Uh, Ian Scott, I think it's a little simpler. Um. And I mean, they certainly would never do that unless they injured like three goalies. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I like that. I understand why it's allowed, but it's it's a smell, right? I don't okay. like how that. No. Well, it's a bit. If you're smelly. the sharks, you're gonna hate it. If you're the sharks, you're gonna argue against you it. You sure are, and I bet wow. you this is the last time this happens. I agree with you guys. I think it'll happen. I was just playing devil's advocate, but I think oh, it'll be the last time. No, I love it. Hey. Uh, thank you so much for listening. We're not sure when we'll be back next week. It's going to depend on playoffs and uh, Steve's schedule with the book and all I would that say stuff. Maybe Tuesday. Um, Probably Tuesday, Thursday. But yeah, we're out of tour dates. Um, we're looking into more. Um, we're probably going to do more than we've been talking about doing more than just like a simple signing. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, the audio book is out. Yes. So check I, this out. I've enjoyed the hell out of that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Are you done? Uh, I'm not done. You're in the middle of it. I'm in the middle of it. I'm really, really enjoying it. So it's available on Audible. It's available on iTunes. It will be available on Google Play. I don't know if it is yet. Um, and it's available on ECW Press's website. And here's how that applies to you. If you have bought the paperback, and I don't know if you know this, if you own the paperback. If you bought the paperback, you're eligible to A, a free e-copy of the book, mm. and B, a $7 audiobook. So Whoa. If you, it, yeah, if you provide ECW Press with proof that you uh, bought the paperback, you get the audiobook for seven bucks. Cool. That's it's great. It's 10 hours, 22 minutes. So I think, what is it on I, iTunes? Like 25 bucks or something like that? It's a, uh, I don't know, for 10 hours, I think it's a good deal. Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, the fact is, uh, it's it's. I have to tell you, as Steve's friend, it's sort of fun to go through it and, and go, oh, I remember that. Oh, I don't remember that. Wow. Uh, and, and like, it's almost like getting to re know your friend, which is kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, but it's been a lot of fun to listen to. And I am only, I'm probably only three hours in. I just haven't had a chance, a huge chance to listen this week, but still three hours, not bad. And uh, I'm going to probably burn it all up this weekend. It takes How many hours? 10. 10 hours, 22 minutes. Well, that's not too bad. Not bad at all. Considering the Winston Churchill first volume of his, of his biography was 160 hours. Are you freaking serious? I'm not serious. I'm not kidding. It's, it was not serious. It's I guess he lived a bit of a life. He did, yeah. And they have a whole bunch of stuff from his childhood. Like, everybody used to write stuff down back then. Oh, right, and like, right, And right. then they'd keep their letters. So he'd, like, boxes of stuff. And, like, oh the late Victorian era is very interesting because everybody wrote everything down. And they kept it all. Even, there, even like, things that they would never want you to find out about. It was almost like they had this perverse, mm. I want you to find out, but after I'm dead thing going on. Mm. It's weird. Uh, also, quick thing. Want to say happy birthday to Jesse Blake? It was April the 9th, but still, happy birthday to our boy Jesse. I want to say happy birthday to Adam Wild. It's uh, tomorrow, mm-hmm. April the 13th. And I want to say happy birthday to both of you. And I filled out your cards and left them on the kitchen counter before leaving for the <laughs> podcast. So I will give you those uh, tomorrow, I guess, at the uh, Matt Sundin thing. Yeah. Leo Vegas. Oh, I won't be there. <laughs> All right. Are I'm going gonna... to pop in and do a couple social media updates. Yep. Got to. Get some video. Oh, oh, I will. With by. Iceberg on the ice. Oh. Iceberg on the ice, icing his back. <laughs> that's right. I'm excited. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Noted Iceberg Aki guy. Iceberg. Yeah, that's right. The that's... Aki stands for acupuncture. <laughs> <laughs> acupuncture that's funny. Iceberg. Uh-huh. There you go. Amazing. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Uh, if you were at the Crown Royal event, we hadn't thanked you already. Thank you so much for coming. And we love you, and we will see you probably Tuesday, because that's really what makes the most sense, right? I think or so. maybe Monday, Wednesday. We'll see. Monday is game three. 
Yeah, so we do that. that we'll about. figure this out off. We'll figure it out. We love you. Bye. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.